This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> I faced my fears more than I ever knew I had. Valeria Tellis interviews Bill McKenna, the author of Suffering is Optional. Marathon runner, martial artist, helicopter pilot, and former adrenaline junkie turned spiritual teacher, Bill McKenna has pioneered a groundbreaking method for creating massive change, shifting perspective, and raising consciousness. And it all centers around a brightly colored ball. Bill McKenna is the author of The Only Lesson, and the founder of the Cogno Movement Systems. During his own life-changing spiritual awakening, Bill studied with a number of master teachers to learn the secrets of self-discovery and the ability to create miraculous change in his life and in the lives of others. Bill now shares those secrets with his students in his renowned Secrets of the Masters series. While in pursuit of gifting what he had learned to others, he wanted something that could help people in a faster, longer-lasting, and more profound way. That's when Bill began working with cognitive movement and discovered that change can be fast, easy, and even permanent. He then began to develop the groundbreaking technology of the Cogno Movement Systems with his business partner, Liz Larson. Today, Bill is creating miracles for his clients, along with Cogno Movement practitioners around the world. Meet Bill at CognoMovement.com. Here is the interview with Bill McKenna. In your own words, who is Bill McKenna? Oh, gosh. Um, well, uh, he's multifaceted. That's, you know, that's for sure. For the purposes of kind of the audience, I'm the founder of Cogno Movement, also the author of a book called The Only Lesson, which was about a spiritual awakening. What do you think this experience or experiment called life is? Oh, well, gosh, that was a, that was a, that's a wonderful question. I was very confused by that, really, pretty much all my life. And I ended up uh, having this awakening that happened, I think it started in about 2006, 2007, and it was very abrupt and kind of aggressive. And I simply learned that life is really a journey of discovery. Uh, and this journey, its purpose is to learn a lesson. And that lesson is that we are here to love with no strings attached. In one of the questions, I think I asked one person, or perhaps two, not, I don't remember now, but I asked the question about if it is possible to love unconditionally from a vessel, the human body or the human being perspective that is highly conditioned. Oh, gosh, another. Wow, you have really good value. <laughs> you have really good questions. <laughs> um, you know, um, for uh, it's the reason we're here. First of all, mm -hmm. it's the only lesson we're learning. We're learning about. And when we learn that lesson, we're free to go. Or, you know, our time runs out. But is it the question is, is it possible? And the reason we find it so difficult is we're in a not only a programmed vessel of this physical body that has an awful lot of kind of memories, our own memories and memories uh, from our ancestors kind of built into it. 
uh, that that get uh, scientifically proven, they get handed down to us, which is a whole other subject. It's actually a lot easier than people think. And when I say that is to look at unconditional love as simply a good feeling. I have a good feeling towards you, Valeria, and it's not attached to any outcome. So as I start to let go of outcomes and I simply have a good feeling about you, it's not that hard to do. It doesn't have to be like, oh, overwhelming and like, oh, I see the the light has shone down. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's actually, mm-hmm. it happens in each relationship, moment by moment, day after day, is uh, to have a good feeling and that I'm just not going to put a condition on it or, or an outcome. And the reason I say that it gets E, it's it's not as hard it, as people might think, is that humans will do whatever they think is in their best interest. We When we discover that it's actually good for us to have this feeling of love for another, that all of a sudden we get benefits like, our intuition kicks up, life goes better, people people like us and we like them, we have better relationships, all kinds of um, jujubes, uh, benefits, a uh, piece of chocolate uh, that, we, that we did not know about emerge quite naturally all the, all the way to the point of being able to do the miraculous. You mentioned that when thoughts activate the body, then feelings arise. And that's a trap in a way, <laughs> because then um, it might be the conditions, the traumas, everything we went through is just um, the cycle, the loop, as you say. So my first question is about the feelings and emotions. Are they the same? So this is a really interesting question. And... I'll back up just a little bit to help everybody understand. Our subconscious, it expresses itself through our physical body Mm -hmm. as a feeling. So somehow, either through your ancestors, your mom, your dad, your environment, things that happen, right? We are subconscious, which rules 95% of our lives is uh, programmed. And this starts at an early age from zero to seven. We're in a theta brainwave state, which is the state of hypnosis. So when we get programmed, as we go through life, our subconscious expresses itself through the body as a feeling. And then what happens is we get a feeling and lickety split, you have a thought that you attach to it. And, and then that thought fuels the feeling and these emotions arise. So this thought, feeling, emotion loop, uh, it's something that happens so very, very quickly, we don't even realize it. Uh, I, have a, I have a feeling and then all of a sudden I have the thoughts and, and then I'm stuck in a loop. And pretty much everybody you see walking around has this loop going. How do we become aware of those feelings triggered by thoughts or this loop that you speak of? Oh, gosh. So this is really interesting. Now, for us, what happens is, you know, the subconscious triggers the feeling in the body. And then I have a thought about it. Now, have you ever found yourself, and and I'm sure probably most of the people watching your show have probably had this experience, is they wake up in the morning and they, they like feel agitated, depressed, something, and they're like, why do I feel this way? You know, why do I feel this way? This is, you know, And they're like, and then they come up with a reason. I know why. I get it. It's because of work. It's because of this. It's because of that. 
Well, actually, how they can, they already, if you've gotten to that point, you have the inklings of starting to become free. What you can do is just say, oh, my body is doing this, right? My subconscious is expressing in my body and I have this feeling and I'm just not going to attach a thought to it. Mm -hmm. It's just my body, oh, my body is, you know what? My body's having this feeling and I'm not going to even label it as depression or, you know, like a suicidal feeling or whatever. I'm just going to, oh, well, body, I guess this, you know, this could go on forever and I'm just going to accept you the way you are and that's it. And in a few minutes, this will actually move right through you and dissipate if you just don't attach a feeling to it. It's amazing. It's an amazing technique that you can use right on the fly and anybody can do it right now. You know, whatever feeling, stop attaching your thoughts and reasons to it. And just my body's doing this and accept it. It'll go away. It goes back to love from what I understand. Just treat them, just see it and let it go. It's a surrendering type of experience. Yeah, surrender surrender that to just the feeling. And uh, I'm not going to attach to to that particular creating a reason for it. It's just my body is doing this. And that, okay. And uh, anyway, it, it will, um, that one thing that you could do will change things rapidly. I do have a question here for you. You speak of freedom. You mentioned earlier, uh, once we have learned the lesson of love, then we are free. So my question is, what is freedom to you? And what if we don't learn the lesson? Do we keep coming back here in a human body? My, what I've come to the understanding is that uh, we do come back over and over and over in order to learn the lesson. When we, what happens when we don't learn the lesson? Well, all of us are going to have different experiences, right? That we haven't learned. And, and those, those experiences will feel like shame, guilt, grief, humiliation, anger, fear, resentment, blame. Uh, it'll feel like being demanding and condemning. It'll feel like uh, addictive cravings. Uh, those are the type of things that it will kind of present itself. When you experience freedom, freedom from those type of feelings, a sense of peace will naturally emerge. And what will happen is your center point of attention will go from your physical head down to your heart. Does that make sense? It really resonates. And I love, too, the way uh, you have this in your book. You have the map of awareness, a way of knowing these uh, states of being, or states of mind. You have the fifth dimension, and then the fourth, and then the third. And then you have all these descriptions about them, characteristics, ego, view, awareness, and you speak of peace when you are at the uh, fifth dimension. Is this a way of measuring, of knowing how we are evolving, or consciousness is evolving? It's a, yeah, it's a, in that, uh, in that uh, free, uh, that's a free ebook there, the, yeah. um, uh, suffering's optional. That one, um, the uh, my partner Liz Larson wrote it, and it's about many things. But but that map will show you a map of the different feelings that you might be having, and which firmly put you into different dimensions. And with each different dimension different characteristics emerge. 
So in the, for example, the third dimension, there's laws, rules, regulations, yours and mine. There's a lot of separation, conditional Conditional love rules. So, and all of those kind of those negative emotions, you know, that I described earlier are all part of that third dimension. As you graduate to the next uh, level, the fourth, uh, what happens is uh, there's a gradient. There's more and more love until it becomes unconditional. And in, in this, what you'll find is that the synchronicities and the miraculous become commonplace. Time becomes malleable. And ultimately in the fifth dimension, that what happens is there's instantaneous karma. You think it and it then becomes reality. Anyway, that that whole that's it that we could do a three hour show just on Is that possible to oscillate, to go from one dimension to another? throughout the day or in the moment? Uh, absolutely. A matter of fact, no one I know that just goes and plops permanently right. from one to another. What happens is they bit by bit, they put their toe in. I mean, it's kind of like putting your toe in the pool. Is, it, is, that, is that water going to be warm enough? Yeah. You know? yeah. And then you put a little bit in. And, you know, well, so... In the fourth dimension, and this is uh, part of uh, part of that whole book, is is that we're letting go of the garbage of the third. We're letting go of assumptions. We assume things a, in the third dimension that people are not good enough, things are not good enough. You're seeing everything in judgment, and in the fourth dimension, we let go of that bit by bit by bit. And this gradient where more and more love emerges until we're ready to slip right into the fifth. And when the fifth happens quite by accident for most people, like they, um, they accidentally find themselves uh, thinking something and then pop it happens. And typically it's... Uh, it's like uh, they get angry and then the TV blows up. They get angry and the car blows up because they were they're sitting there in that kind of jumping into the fifth dimension and then they drop down for a second and things happen. Anyway, it's a it's a uh, very interesting journey, shall we say? Talk to me about actually before that, Bill. I have another question for you about spirituality. We use that word a lot. What is spirituality to you, and how did you become a spiritual teacher? Ah, well, I, so I was brought up, I was brought up, you know, Irish Catholic. So, you know, I thought spirituality was the church, right? And I thought, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, obviously the Catholics know everything, right? We're, we've got the story, right? Well. Eventually, you know, during this whole process, I learned uh, the difference in between religions and spirituality. And that simply put, uh, religions are simply a bunch of rules and regulations that people put around spirituality. So uh, the study of, of spirituality is really I would say the, the the study of life and relationships and the lessons that all kind of go back to the only lesson that we're here to learn. I love the way you say that. And I think you wrote a book about that too, The One Lesson or... Yeah, The Only Lesson. The Only Lesson, right. It sounds really simple, doesn't it? Um, one lesson, there's one thing to learn Ah, but that, yeah, that takes a, this whole human lifetime journey, trying to understand and, and express and embody that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I use the word healing. We do here on the show. So, and I often ask the question, what healing is? Is there a destination, a moment where we are healed or it's just a continuation? 
healing's not a destination. A healing is an ongoing process. So we're we're constantly in a state of working on different things. Uh, we have loops that happen uh, where we have uh, a situation with a relationship, a person, work, you know, these sorts of things, and we get caught up in it. And it's there for a reason to help us to find our way to heal. And what I will say is, is that, that things have become way more rapid now than they used to. What would, what would take, you know, decades to process now can be done in minutes. So it is a process. Uh, but it's been sped up dramatically. 2020, was it a, a moment in time where we somehow got into this uh, faster track to healing and evolution? Would you say that? Yes. Um, it, it, everything sped up. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at your own life, you'll see the truth of this. And this, this is for all, everybody listening. And that is that chaos precedes creation. Mm, yeah, true. So we need to have a breakdown in order for the new to emerge. And as much as I hate it, <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm, I'm a fan, like, hey, Bill, guess what? You know, you're going to have your whole life crumble. Well, nice. I don't know. Can I do a different way? Well, yes, I could, but typically, typically the, the method is, <laughs> is, you know, chaos before creation. And speaking of movement, talk to me for a moment about the uh, Cogna movement method you have created with Liz Larson. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Well, so we have created a method to make suffering optional. So there's all kinds of things that are in your life, whether it's your weight, whether it's your boss, your, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, you know, the daughter, we all have these things where we're like, Oh, you know, I'm, my life sucks to be, you know, this thing, if, if I could overcome this one thing, life would be grand. And we have made uh, something called Cogno Movement. It is um, multifaceted in that it utilizes neuroscience, breathing, acupuncture points, movement, and focus on on a particular issue, let's say, you know, your husband divorced you and, the, you know, and they're not supporting the kids. And it's like, uh, well, what you do with this method is you allow yourself to feel all the resentment. It's completely contrary to everything we've learned, you know, like you just got to forgive them. Well, yes. But the easiest person to forgive is the person that you have no feeling about. This feeling of resentment, for example, is stuck in your physical body. And through this physical mental exercise that you do with a ball, what happens is it releases from your body and you actually feel it. Let's say, you know, the pain of this, you feel it in your heart or you feel a constriction in your throat physically when you think about them, or maybe you feel in your belly. What you find is that in a few minutes, you focus on it, you feel the resentment, and then the sensation in your body moves. You actually feel it move up your body or down your body, and then it's gone. And the emotion you feel along with it is just disintegrates. And typically, when it leaves your body, and it's emotionally done after a few minutes of this exercise, uh, cognitive movement exercise, it just doesn't happen again. And the very, very strangest of things 
is that the relationships, without you doing a darn thing, change. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people that have the, you know, some sort of major relationship issue, and then they process the issue inside of them. And all of a sudden the person calls and they're like, Hey, you know, how you doing? You want to come over for dinner tonight? Like, like nothing happened, you know? Do you also work with the mind in a psychological manner of asking questions and you do ask questions, actually. You, in your book, you say, um, the question is, what do you want? So why is that question important, Bill? So we do ask questions. Uh, when we do a Cogno movement session, we ask about what, what's really important to the person. You know, if they, if they want to, you know, gain wealth or have a good relationship, we find out what's important, you know, why, why, why would you want that? And the instantaneous answer is always, what are you kidding? You know, I, you know, <laughs> I, 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 but you, know, if you ask it, if you keep, if you keep delving in just a wee bit more, what, what you find is you'll find the real answer because, and, you know, because then I'll be loved or then I'll be cared about, then I'll be respected, you know, then I'll feel good about myself. So we unwrap whatever, unwrap whatever it is. And once we can get down to the particular issue, it typically processes really quickly. And when somebody knows how to do the method themselves, that's we, uh, why we had titled the book, you know, Suffering is Optional. Because once you know it and you've experienced it, you're like, I don't have to suffer anymore. I can actually make this change. I do have a few more questions for you. Those are the ending questions. Would you like to add anything? Um, well, I first of all, I so very much appreciate you, the work you're doing and, and having me on. I would welcome people to uh, go to the, uh, our Cogno Movement website and experience. It, you can download the book for free and also uh, it, and uh, consider experiencing, you know, Cogno movement so that uh, you can stop your suffering. Yeah, I'll have the link on your podcast profile too. If you knew you would die soon, meaning losing the body, would you make any change or do anything in a different way? You know, I think about that question all the time. Yeah. So I, I love that you asked it. And the answer is no. I sent my daughter off to school this morning and I would have done everything exactly the same. And um, I try to look as that every day will never happen again. And this may be the last one. What are three things about life you know for sure as of this moment? Oh, now there's a good question. Three <laughs> things I know about life for sure. Yeah. That my feelings create. That we, that's number one. Number two is that I know for sure that we are all way more powerful than we think that the good deed or the bad deed, the, the compliment or insult, whatever it might be, has a much, much further reach than we ever uh, give it credit for. And the evidence of that is in your lives. Think about people you know from your childhood who did this or did that. They forgot about it. But you still live with it. You still think about it. And last one is that I know that it is a choice to love. That in every day that we have to actually make a choice. So true. Thank you so much again for sharing your wisdom, 
for your presence, for the being aware of your purpose and your work. Thank you, Bill. Well, likewise, Valeria. Thanks <laughs> you. <laughs> we'll talk soon for sure. We'll be in touch. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Bill McKenna and his work, please visit cognomovement.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org/podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.